What is up, fam? Welcome back to the Brandon Bruce channel. Today is my Friday. Today is actually Monday, but today is my Friday of work. And so what I want to do, we, we've we been having some nice weather. Like literally, it's like 60 degrees outside. Google says it's 69. I don't know if that's true because Alexa said it was just like 60, but whatever. What I want to do, I want to go for a bike ride. I think I need to put some air in my tires, but uh, we're gonna figure it out. We're gonna go to one of my favorite parks and I'm gonna take you guys along. Let's do it. It's been crazy. I've just been Superman. I cut the grass yesterday. My yard is cut. I didn't want to have to do all of that on my off days. I'm off Tuesday and Wednesday, so I just want to do what I want to do on those days. Of course, I still got some other chores I need to do, but those things can wait. So there's my bike. I think I do need to put air in it. Hold on. We're not going that far because your boy gotta go to work today. This is a day in the life video of a local truck driver. But this truck driver is going to get him a ride in first on the bike. I wish I would have just got up a little earlier and I could have rode a little further or actually spent more time at the park. But now I am headed to the truck. Uh, I'm not sure if I told you guys. I think starting out, I told you that I was able to take my truck home and I used to park it at my mom's house, but they hired somebody after me. I was the 19th person on this account and it looks like they like to keep 20 to 21 people. And so, they're sleep, slip seating me. Slip seating is when you share a truck. I work from 3 p.m. to 3 a.m. They work from 3 a.m. to 3 p.m. So that's been interesting because that's my first time. This is my first time actually sharing a truck with anybody. I've always had my own truck. Um, there's some pros and cons about it. The pros about it is that once I get out of, get out of that truck, and I get in my car, I'm completely done with trucking, done with work until the next day, until I get back to it. So I do like that versus me driving it home. I still feel like, oh, I gotta babysit it, make sure it's secure. But that's a little different because I'm leaving it at the yard. So that's that. But the con, uh, you gotta share it with somebody. Meaning like when I had it myself, I filled up every other day. I could literally run on that, on those tanks on fuel for two days. But now I'm filling up every day and then you're dealing with, like I remember I wrote a ladder, I wrote a note. Like when the dude first started, I left him a full tank and he left me a half tank. And I'm just like, you can put that back in there. So, uh, so I left him a note. I was like, hey man, it help us out if we just fill the tank. And I only do it like that, so when you get to the truck, you can start working. You don't have to worry about going to fill up. Well, so it's been like that for quite some time, but there were two times, including yesterday. Yesterday, he left me like a half a tank, and I'm just like, okay, were you busy or whatever? Like, just communicate, let me know. And the dude got my number, I gave him my number. 
Um, he's called me like twice for question, uh, for questions or whatever. He had some questions to ask about, uh, I think his fuel card or whatever. And, um, I don't know. It's like, I could tell he's younger than me. But he's probably like early twenties. And there is just something different about that generation. I'm not going to go into full detail, but they're just a little different. Like they don't speak. They don't say, hey, how you doing? It's like, no manners. But uh, I'll leave that alone. But uh, that's the only thing, yeah, because I mean, you, you, when you're used to your own, when you run it different, you take care of it different. Yeah, that's what it is, so. So we're gonna drive to the drive yard in Blue Island. In Blue Island, Illinois. That's where I'm going. I'll pick it up when I get to the truck yard. Here's another thing. You guys might see that seem that my energy level is down is because I have a slight headache. And I know it's because I have not had any coffee. I'm out of coffee filters. I don't have K cups at home. What is going on in the world, y'all? So I'm gonna go I'm gonna go stop at Starbucks because there's a Starbucks like right down the street from the drop yard. So we're gonna go there, get us some drink and then get in the truck. I'll be back in a few, y'all. Let me see which I seen her. I watched her make it. Ooh. This is it right here. That's it. That tastes real good. <laughs> I'm addicted to coffee. I'm an addict. All right, y'all, we are in the truck. I just finished my pre-trip. Everything is looking good. We are ready to go. And I'm just waiting for my pre-trip clock to come back and catch up to me. Well, not come back, but catch up to me. Shout out to Bree, Brianna. She watches my channel. I watch her channel. I remember she mentioned this in her video, but this is a tip for you guys if you are new drivers. And anytime you pre-trip your truck, pre-trip your truck. Do not start your clock before you pre-trip it. Because if you find something that's wrong, you find a leak, you find a tire that's messed up, find whatever. If you find something that's cut or whatever, you can get that fixed and not waste your clock. Because many times, if it's something that you got to call roadside or call a mechanic to fix, it's going to take about an hour, two, three hours. And that would be an hour, two or three of your clock being saved versus you, especially for over the road. If you're over the road, you want to save that clock as much as possible. I would hate to just be sitting down watching my clock go because I could have did my pre-trip before I pressed the pre-trip button. Yeah, just a, just a tip. One of my trainers gave me that tip, man. It was the best tip ever. So, uh, yeah. Let's start this baby up and turn this AC on. Just like I said before, this dude did not... He did not fill the tank up, so... I'm gonna go get an empty trailer. And then I gotta go to the gas station.
That's the kind of stuff I did while I was on the road. So uh, I'm keeping that same mindset. Even though local is local, I, you still are in the same parameters when it comes to time. It's the same thing. Um, I don't have a pre-plan, so it's not like I'm chasing pre-plans, waiting for something to be sent, because I'm only going between two places. And me going between two places, uh, I go to a place to pick up the load and I bring it here to get delivered and only times i'll have to wait is when i'm waiting for a load actually for them to have something loaded but it's never like i'm waiting for a pre-plan like oh i'm waiting for dispatch to give me something so i can take it somewhere no i'm always going to the same places so every single day i know where i'm going i don't use gps because i've been going to the same places for now 30 days plus and I know where I'm going, so it would be like weird to use GPS. <laughs> so right now there's a truck checking in. Also, I'll throw this out there. If you ever watched my videos while I was regional and over the road, I'm very, uh, I'm making my business not to show where exactly I'm at as in privacy to the businesses, um, the companies and all of, the, and all of that. I don't put that on camera. I know there are truckers who do. That's your prerogative. But when it comes to me, I don't want to put that on there. So you'll never see like, oh yeah, he was at Walmart. Oh yeah, he was at... Uh, I don't even think back in the day I ever told y'all where I was going. I told you location-wise, but you never knew the customer or the, the constantly or where it was being delivered to. So that's just the safe practice that I've tried to keep in the social media streets and youtube streets because at the end of the day like i don't know it's private property so you are going on private property and i don't want to i don't want to invade their privacy So that's one of the perks. I don't know. 
well, it's one of the perks of being on a dedicated local run. You see the same people. And she's real cool, the lady I checked in with. Um, we chat a little bit. One of the other ladies, too, we chat, too. Especially when they were changing the system and doing some things. We were talking and whatever. I don't, when you build those types of relationships, people look out for you. They look out for you. Um, they make your job easier. So, that's one thing I used to try to do when I was on the road. Especially if I was going to the same places. What is this guy doing? Let's go around him. Because I don't think he knows what he's doing. That's what she was talking about. He was holding up the line. and Something about, I guess he's picking up a trailer that was dropped off picking up a trailer that was dropped off like an hour ago and I guess he's looking for it to be unloaded and y'all know how that is Woo! I, I do not miss that I do not miss live loads I do not miss live loads oh my gosh but what I've done for live loads I just made the best of it like it is what it is. Not only that, I, in my truck I had a TV, I had jacks, so I had plenty of stuff to do. Should I get this trailer? Oh no, it's loaded. It's not open. Parker having that back window. All I gotta do is turn around. Who needs a rear view mirror when you can just have a whole window? Alright, to a test. Looks like we are set to go. And I don't have to move the tandems because they are good. So yeah. One of my tips for when you are hooking up to a trailer, connect those airlines and push your rear airline. While you're back here, you can walk and listen to make sure that your trailer is not leaking any air. If you have a tire that's leaking, if you have an airbag that's leaking anything, you are going to hear it while you're back here before you decide to pull out and get on the road. You ain't gotta do all that. Make life easy. All right, something I'm gonna do. I need to enter that trailer number in here in the system and then we're good to go.
right, y'all, we are here. Just pulled up. About to drop this empty and look for a load. I should look for a load right now. Hold on. these tires I don't know why they parked this over here this is not what we usually do I want to move my tandems up just a tad bit So now we are ready to get back on the road and we're gonna go back to the first place that we went to deliver this. All right, y'all. Uh, I just delivered the load. I was gonna take, I was gonna show y'all, I was gonna record the backing, but when I pulled up, opened my doors, they raised the door to the dock. The dude was on the forklift sitting there waiting. I'm just like, dang, this is, y'all ain't playing today. So I opened the doors and just hurry up and backed it in there. And now I'm just connected to an empty so we can do the whole thing over again so I'm about to pre-trip this then I'll get back with you guys when I get back to the location to pick up another load because that's basically what I do all day just keep going back and forth um, before I take off I'm gonna show you guys I'm not gonna show it on the screen but I'll let you guys know what the information is that I log in all right y'all it's getting dark So I'm going to enter into our system just to say that I, and our, our system for this dedicated route is, I'll turn this off. All right. Let me put a little bit more light in here, I think. All right. So the system we use is on our phone. Um, the way they set this up, I don't have to use the Qualcomm to enter my information. Some people actually do. I was shown how to do it, but I think they're converting. They're converting over to using this app. And they use the Vector app. I believe a lot of people actually use it. Different companies. So I'm simply saying I delivered that and I'm picking this up. That's basically all that I am saying. Yeah, my head still hurt. I feel like, I think it's sinus related. And then I was outside with that grass, but I did have a mask on yesterday when I was cutting the grass. But I'm noticing like, it's like right here. And I did, I did stop and get fuel and then I got something to eat. Um. Yeah, I did that to the 30 minutes and now, come on, stop playing. 
And this and this system, this app is like iffy. Thank you. Pick up completed. Okay, that's enough. All right, so we're gonna get back on the road and keep moving. y'all right, the night just ended um made it back here to the yard this is what the yard looks like and uh we are going home it was uh it was a decent day oh wow i drove i drove 335 miles today that's crazy and i only drove like in a circle that's all I do is drive in a circle every single day. Um, that's pretty much it. I'm going to do a post trip and then I'm going to get in my car right there and go home because your, your boy is tired. I don't look tired, but I'm tired. It's been a long day. And the, the thing that stresses you out mostly is the traffic. When I first got on the road, 294 was terrible and coming back it was bumper to bumper for like a good 15 miles and we were only going like 15 miles per hour so after a while that gets taxing it's like yeah it just sucks all the energy out of you so i did i was going to go get another load but I called up there and they didn't have one ready. The next one was gonna be like 30 minutes and I was an hour away. Somebody was already sitting for that. So it's like a first come first serve. You get up there, the first truck gets to load. Then if there's something else, you have to wait. I'll share more of that in detail later on, but I hope you guys enjoyed this day in the life of Brandon being a local truck driver. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I will see you guys in the next one. Be blessed.